We're here at uh, Plain View Farm. Um, we're picking spaghetti squash right now, sorting through to find um, blemishes or disease that the squash might have gotten. Um, it's really cool to get out of the classroom and actually do real physical work. Uh, a really great uh, experience that not a lot of students get to get is to come outside and help with the growing of food for the community. Rather than just sitting in the classrooms like learning, I can actually talk to the farmers and ask them questions. So it's like a deeper connection to what I'm learning. And Yeah, I just think it's, it's really cool that we actually get to come out into the field and see it and get the hands on and actually have that interaction with someone who has done it before and uh, get that experience like passed on. Keep in mind, right, there is now a camera in the room, so please don't say what you guys can <laughs> Let's decide on the title for this presentation. Does anyone have one? It was kind of cool to do it because usually we would just get a bunch of numbers and um, okay. we would just do data, and that, like the data analysis and then like it really didn't mean anything if it was just a bunch of numbers thrown at us but actually going and seeing what they do and seeing the people that they help out it was a, it was a great experience and uh, I loved it and I would do it again. When you see like you know what would normally just be like a big data point um, and you're like, oh man, it's busy that month. But then when I went, I was serving food, and it was it was hectic. You know, it was people running everywhere serving food. So when you see like a busy month, you can be like, oh man, they need a lot of volunteers that month, and you understand what's going on. You know, and, um, it really like opened my eyes to see how many people actually do need the help. that in 2013 and 2015, your hours for your average volunteer are roughly about the same. Um, but whatever you guys did in 2014 really worked because you can see a spike increase in the average. Very nice. Alright, smile! It was nerve wracking, but it also felt good because it was a culmination of weeks of effort, you know, to finally be able to present it. You know, be like, this is what we did, and see their their reaction to everything. Oh, good. In the previous, I was really absolutely curious to see if there were patterns in our data, and I hope, I hope that this gave an opportunity for the students to really connect what goes on in an everyday nonprofit with what they're learning in the classroom. This experience, my service learning project, not only made me a better teacher, and will make me a better teacher for the next. 60 years, <laughs> but made me a better person. It made me look at myself and examine how I live my everyday life and what is really important to me. Being, getting ready for these presentations, the preparing part, really helped solidify all the information that we had gotten from our, during our lectures and even through our studies. Mm. So it really brought home these these really these big health concerns and conditions that so many people are dealing with. Um, we really appreciate the opportunity that we were given, you know, as we were the only clinical group that was given this opportunity and it, it was huge. And we got a lot, I think we might have got more out of the presentations than maybe the seniors did. <laughs> Puerto Rico pues lo podemos hacer todo el año, a pesar de que no era mi trabajo allá. Diverso, Diverso a un español pero matado. ¿sabes? No, hay español matado. No, no, sí, eso no, eso no existe, existe, eso no, eso no existe. En español nosotros eso nunca lo hemos matado. No, soy, soy del campo, soy nacido y criado en el campo.
four projects uh, to the Boys and Girls Club. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Now you go. Yeah. Right, that's what he does. He has a, a light sensor in front of it. And every time he sees a black line, then he tells the robot to do some type of command, which is back in our menu. Uh, my name's Amelia, I go to HTC. It's kind of interesting, like, because you have to like explain things in a different way so it helps kind of your understanding of how the, like a more basic understanding of how things work no 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 it's, it's okay to lose a piece yeah no 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 i mean it was i definitely think it was overall a positive experience i think not only for us as the students but also for the kids it really uh shows you how much you know about the subject when you have to teach it to someone else and i think that helps you learn as well Did you get the sense that, that um, individuals are discriminated against when they apply for housing? Yes, and that's something that I, didn't, I had never thought of prior to this class or even going down there. I went, and yesterday I was applying for a job online, and during the application process, they did ask me if I was at least 18 years of age or older in order to apply for the job, which I had already answered that question, yes. And later on in the application process, I later had to put in a required field of what my date of birth was, which to me leads, leads me to believe that they're going to just kind of filter me out because of my age, and that's a very good possibility. But I could not finish the application process unless I had put that field in. While doing my research for my presentation on um, gender discrimination, that there's still a lot that goes on, and it may be a little bit more um, well hidden than it used to be. It's not so out there and upfront, but that there's still a long way uh, that needs to be traveled before we reach a point where women are equal, not just in pay, but also in how they're treated in the workplace and how they're hired at a job. Um, I came to the realization that for especially women with children, it's gonna be difficult to acquire an apartment um, they were mo mostly concerned with addressing issues with landlords, and I had the opportunity to take an active stance and approach to combat discrimination. At least, I found it very interesting the implications when someone asks you, "Do you have children?" Um, if someone, if a tenant, a prospective landlord rather asks a tenant, "You know, do you have children?" That's not allowed. And the implication of asking you that might hint at something that they are not up to date with or up to regulation with. And because they're not there, they're going to discriminate against that person. Um, for me, you know, it was an eye-opening experience, um, one that I'm going to treasure for the rest of my life. This year in our women's psychology course we did a study on it was like a work study that we did with some girls from a program and we kind of did like not really a mentoring but some journal writing back and forth and then at the end we had a big meeting where we all got to get together and like finally meet the girls that we were journaling with to my understanding it's sort of like an alternate juvenile hall but like more nurturing than like punishing and uh, yeah, we've worked to them. Uh, that's what we're doing today, actually. We're doing like a little meet and greet and like a dinner, and we did uh, like journal entries with them where we talk about some of the topics we learned in class. And uh, yeah, it's been really good, and I think they really enjoy it. And I certainly get a lot out of it. So it's really great to have like physical experiences to back up what I'm learning in the book. And before we got to talk to them, we got to like see where they're living in the situation that they're in, where they do their classes. And we integrated our schoolwork with it because we asked them questions that we were posed with during class as well. So we
So some of the course material that we've been learning is just about some of the, um, the yeah. institutions, the foster care system and the juvenile delinquent system and the, you know, the, the law, just, you know, how and how it relates to uh, kids who are kind of on the brink um, and, you know, just how it affects them to go from foster home to foster home and, and the, the different sort of um, mental illnesses that can come from that. I was actually, I was pleased, which is why I went to the caregiving group, because mm -hmm. I was pleased that they were like, well, you know, this is something that is diagnosed when you're young and you struggle with it for so many years of your life, but that it can change, that depending on how committed and willing the people around you are and how they can change the environment, that it really can change your associations with life. And I think that that's what really interested me about going to the caregiving group, because, I mean, even when it comes to, like, just bad kids or unhappy kids, like I think that that speaks volumes of just making sure that the environment and the people are positive and productive and thinking about the future rather than trying to go Even back. Even people like that. teachers. No, I mean, this is how things start. And, and I'm just so, so grateful for the work you guys have put in here and the learning you've done. It's just, it's, it's phenomenal. One of my personal goals in doing this, in journaling, and also in talking with the girls, was to give them a sense that they can learn to trust. That it, it really opened my eyes. I did not know that we had such a broken system in this country um, when it comes to taking care of our children. And I found it heartbreaking. As part of the One Campus, One Theme initiative focusing on food this year, we held um, HCC's first day of service. So we had over 50 students involved um, in the day and basically they went into the community at Margaret's Food Pantry, at Kate's Kitchen, and at Nuestros Reyes's Farm and did a whole variety of service projects. The event was really, really successful this year. Margaret's Pantry in particular um, noted that they got a whole bunch of projects done as a result of our students' work that had needed to be done for the last 10 years, so we felt really, really good about it.